Good evening. I'm Dr. Robert Peppercorn, and this is the Yuba Sutter Medical Explorer. As a specialist in skin diseases and allergy and as host of this program, I will take you on an exploration of the medical communities of Yuba and Sutter counties and bring you behind the scenes of medical care practices right here in our local area. I have a very interesting and useful program for you tonight as we return behind the scenes of my office, the Skin and Allergy Clinic of Yuba City, to explore the subject of skin allergies. During this segment, you will have the opportunity to observe a unique type of allergy testing performed by dermatologists that enables us to find the cause of some difficult and very frustrating skin rashes. The technique is called contact dermatitis patch testing, and I will show you an actual patient who used it to eliminate his skin rash problem. Our second subject tonight will attempt to clear up some confusing terminology used by medical insurance companies as we meet an experienced medical office business manager. They are both extremely interesting and practical subjects, and I hope that you'll stay with us for the next half hour. Before getting to our topic tonight, let's take a look at the latest medical news. New blood tests being considered by the Food and Drug Administration may soon help doctors detect the recurrence of cancer far earlier than can be done today. The tests use tiny laboratory-made molecules called monoclonal antibodies to detect the presence of cancer cells before a new tumor has had the chance to grow much beyond the microscopic stage. That would get around the central problem in cancer detection. The larger a tumor grows, the more chance it has to spread to other organs and the harder it is to cure. President Reagan's colon cancer has drawn attention to the risks of recurrence and the need for early detection. With the methods used in Reagan's case, by the time a tumor can be seen, there is a greater likelihood it is spread to other organs. Reagan will likely be given one of the older forms of the tests, one called CEA, or carcinoembryonic antigen, in the next few coming years. The new tests will add more precision to their ability to detect cancer early. The tests are now indicated only for people who have had a diagnosis of cancer, but may someday be used in routine checkups. Next in the medical news is, a, is more bad news for marijuana smokers. Habitual marijuana smokers run an increased risk of lung cancer, new research reveals. A UCLA professor studied 150 people who smoked an average of five marijuana cigarettes a day for 10 days. He found 33% had respiratory problems such as chronic bronchitis. 35 smokers showed significant tissue abnormalities in their lungs, and there was evidence of damage to the trachea and bronchi in most of the smokers. Marijuana also appears to harm the immune system, and it appears that it takes far less marijuana to produce the same symptoms and abnormalities as those found in tobacco users. My final medical news item gives good news for women who exercise. Women apparently can slow down the aging process by exercising regularly, an ongoing study confirms. Researchers at the University of Illinois studied 150 women between ages 30 and 85 and found that those who exercise regularly have denser bone mineral content and leaner body mass than those who don't exercise. The study shows that a lot of the fatness of older women is due to lifestyle and not to the aging process. The study adds evidence to earlier research that shows exercise may reduce the likelihood of osteoporosis, a disease characterized by soft, porous bones. My health tip for tonight concerns one of the most troublesome and annoying skin rashes that occurs in our area. This is the problem of poison oak. The poison oak plant is one of the most plentiful bushes that grows readily along the river bottoms and throughout the foothills. It can be most easily recognized by the unusual grouping of three leaves. The surfaces of the leaves are usually shiny, and often there will be areas of red within the plants. If you are one of the many people who are allergic to the plant, you can count on developing a terribly itchy rash that looks like red lines and red blotches within 48 hours after you touch it. Although the best remedy is to stay away from it, there are several things you can do to make it much less troublesome. If you feel that you've touched it, immediately take a shower with plenty of soap and water. Be sure to wash all clothing and pets 
that may have come into contact with the poison oak plant. Remember, the only way it can spread is by allowing the extracts of the plant to touch you. The best treatment for severe poison oak rashes is cortisone, which can be given by your doctor in the form of a quick-acting injection or with prescription pills. Now, on with the medical explorer. The subject of allergies seems to have some effect on us during our lifetimes. Either we experience difficult problems ourselves, or we have a friend or relative that suffers from an allergy. We are familiar with hay fever and sinus allergies that cause annoying sneezing, runny nose, and itchy, watery eyes. On a previous Medical Explorer program, I demonstrated the way that allergists like myself can test for hay fever. This testing is called allergy scratch testing. Tonight, however, we will focus on another type of allergy problem. People often develop skin rashes because their skin touches something that it's allergic to. A good example is poison oak. Several hours a day after touching a poison oak plant, a person sensitive to poison oak will develop the terribly itchy red rash, often with blisters. Besides being allergic to plants, people can also be allergic to other chemicals that they touch. Some of these items include perfumes, soaps, shampoos, hair dyes, metals, cement, and even leather. The list of possibilities is endless. Have you ever wondered how a dermatologist can often tell the cause of a skin allergy? Most of the time he can tell by looking at the rash and just listen, listening to the patient's history. Sometimes, however, it's not that easy, and a special test called contact dermatitis patch testing must be performed. Let's leave our Medical Explorer studio now and visit my office on Del Norte Avenue. Well, Mark, uh, my nurse tells me that you're now uh, 17 or 18 years old. 17. And you just graduated from Yuba City High School. Yes. Tell me a little about this rash that you've been having. Uh, uh, they, she mentions it's on your feet. What's been going on? Well, I get a, a red, pussy infection on the bottom of my feet, on the top part. But we'll take a look at that in a few minutes. Okay. It itches a lot? Yeah. Has it been going on just this summer, or has it been a long time? In the past three summers. Three summers. Seems to get worse every summer. Yes. And it's the top of your feet? Yes. Have you had rashes anywhere else on your body? No. So just the feet? Yeah. Now, often foot rashes can be caused by things such as poison oak problems that you may have got on your skin. They can be caused by fungus. You've heard of athlete's feet. Everybody yeah. talks about yeah. that. But there are other things that can do it, too. Is there any activity that you're involved in? Do you play tennis or jog? I roller skate. Roller skate, now that's a good, that's a good activity. How long have you been doing that? Five years. Oh. Have you, uh, do you do this as a hobby, or is it really a serious thing, for, more serious for you? Uh, real serious. I just recently won the state championships. The, the state championship for roller skating for yeah. the whole, all of California? And Arizona and Nevada. Well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> That's fantastic. So you have specific skates you have to wear, is that right? Yeah. Well, what I'd like to do now is take a look at the rash, so let's get set up to do that. Okay. Um, Mark, what I see here is that the top of your feet is extremely red and irritated. Is this where it itches like crazy? Yes. Have you uh, tried anything on it, used any medicines? Uh, some cream from the pharmacy that didn't seem to work. This wasn't a doctor's prescription, though? No. Well, what I look for in looking at the feet is, is there a sign of a fungus? Is there a sign of athlete's foot? And looking between your toes, you have the cleanest toes I've ever seen. Uh, you don't have any scaling between your toes, nothing that looks like what athlete's foot would look like. We usually see scaliness in there. So that really takes that possibility away. You don't have athlete's foot. What would be causing a rash on the top of your feet? Well, usually a foot rash like this that's occurring on both feet has to be something happening to both feet. And one thing that can do that is an allergy to something in your shoes. Now that could be shoes for you, but that could also be roller skates. Roller skates have their own shoes that are attached obviously on top. And one way we can test for that to see if you are allergic to something in those shoes or roller skates is to take the chemicals that are in those products, rubbers and leathers and shoelace materials, all kinds of things, and put them on your back for a couple of days and see if they cause a rash that looks like this. Now we're going to have to hold off treating your skin
for a little while because the medicine I might give you to treat this might turn off our tests. What I'd like to do is have my nurse come in and put these tests on your back. Now, if she puts this on there today, you're not going to be able to take a shower tonight or the next day, and you're going to have to keep your activity level down. Now, you don't have to do any practicing with your roller skating tonight, do you? No. Okay. So we'll have you come back here two days after she puts it on. Now, I'll just step out of the room while she comes in and gets set up. Okay. Mark, unlike other allergy testing that you've heard about where people get scratches put on their back to look for things like hay fever and asthma that make people's nose run and that sort of thing, we're not doing anything with scratching today. We're doing something called contact dermatitis patch testing where little patches are going to be placed on your back. The American Academy of Dermatology has prepared some of the most common chemicals that cause allergies to things like shoes, or clothing, or soaps, or perfumes, even metals, nickel. And each of these little bottles contains an extract from those things. So Lorraine is going to take these materials, which she's going to start doing right now, and get them set up so that she can stick them on your back and leave them there for two days. She takes the material from each little jar and puts it on a special little pad. The pad has an aluminum coating on the back so that air doesn't get to this while it's sitting on your back. So slowly, each little piece of paper is covered with a different chemical. And once she has that done, each paper will represent some other chemical in shoes or clothing or rubber products that you might be allergic to. Once she has that put together, she's going to stick this directly on your back and then cover it over with tape. She'll also mark on the tape exactly, uh, exactly what numbers of tests she's done, and then when you come back in two days, we'll take it off and be able to see if you have a reaction. Okay. So can you come back two days from now? Yeah. So I'll see you in 48 hours. Okay. Great. Well, Mark, two days have gone by. Yeah. I guess your feet's still itching a little bit, but I gave you some cream to put on, and that should have given you some relief. Has yeah. it helped a little bit? Not much, but a little. A little, okay. Often when we have rashes that bad, we have to use pills, and we will do that, but let's see what the test shows first. Did it itch very much back there? Yeah, a lot. A lot of itching. That may mean you got something positive. Well, we'll have Lorraine come in now and get that off, and uh, I will actually see whether something showed up. You just feel that tape coming off your skin. Aha, a reaction. That's great to see. It may give us an answer. Now, Lorraine has to mark where each one of those tests was because we don't want to confuse which chemical was which so okay. we can keep a record. We keep records carefully in the chart that will tell us which chemical was used and which type of reaction you had at 48 hours. Okay. And we'll be able to look at the number here. That's number four, and there's a real marked red rash in the center of that that looks just like the rash on your feet. And that may be the answer. Now that's number four, and number four is the Mercapto mix, M-E-R-C-A-P-T-O. And you say, what in the world is Mercapto mix? Well, it turns out Mercapto benzothiazole is a chemical that's used in rubber products. And is there rubber in roller skates? Yeah. There sure is. Rubber is one of the adhesives that's used to keep the roller skates together. So what I'm going to ask you to try to do is to try to get roller skates made that don't have that kind of rubber product in it. Perhaps that won't allow you to have the rash return. Okay. So by finding out that Mercapto mix is the chemical you're allergic to, hopefully by eliminating that in your roller skates, we can stop the rash from coming back. Yeah. Now, we don't wait for all that time to get this better. We have to give you some pills. So I've already written a prescription that I just have to sign now and give to you. And this is a prescription for some pills you take to get that under control. You take them twice a day for a week, then once a day for a second week. They may cause a little stomach upset, but I want you to then come back in a month and let us see what's happened with all this. Okay, okay? Thank you. great. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Pretty good. Well, about a month has gone by since we uh, finished that testing, and you were going to get some new skates. Were you able to get something made up? Yeah. Was it your coach in Sacramento that was able to help you with that? Yeah. Great. How's the itching been doing on your feet? Uh, it hasn't itched at all. That's fantastic. That makes you feel great. Yeah. Let me take a look, if you don't mind. Here. Don't 
Looks pretty good. There's a little residue where the rash used to be, but it's just about faded out by yeah. now. And I can see you got a blister there from too much skating. I guess <laughs> that never stops. How much do you skate every day? Uh, four hours. Four, yeah, that could cause a blister once in a while. I can't imagine that. But it's really nice to see that that rash is really cleared up. So uh, that, that really allows us to see the benefits of doing a test like this, where we were able to prove that your skin rash was caused by a chemical in rubber. And by getting rid of the rubber, you're able to get rid of the rash. Yeah. And maybe now you'll be able to go on to the Olympics. <laughs> and uh, be Now, has roller skating come to the Olympics yet? No. Well, maybe you'll be the first one. Hopefully, yeah. Good luck with everything. And I want Thank you to you. call me immediately if the rash ever starts to come back. OK. Thanks a lot. In the case of my patient tonight, the use of patch testing was extremely useful in totally eliminating his skin rash problem. Many times, however, the patch testing will not find the answer, and the patient and dermatologist must continue their search for the cause of the rash. You should remember that patch testing is only one of many tools used by skin specialists to find the cause of a skin disease. If you suffer from an annoying rash, then you should also consider seeking the assistance of a board-certified dermatologist. Changing subjects now to the often disturbing and frustrating area of dealing with medical insurance. How many times have you been faced with filling out an insurance form or trying to interpret the forms that your medical insurance company sends you when and if they properly process your claim? Have you ever had the difficulty understanding terms like deductible, copayment, or Medicare assignment? Let's visit now with an experienced medical office business manager and learn more about these terms as we return to the Skin and Allergy Medical Group of Yuba City.